everything I'm going to tell you on this program, none of it is an allegation because I was an active participant in the story. So I'll be telling you the things that I saw, basically, not exactly the things that people told me, you know? So how did I get into it? It was about, you know, different complaints that I'd, you know, had, had got over, over a number of months about the scourge of smuggling in that axis, you know? And whenever I put out a story and I sign it off with my name and I call it an investigation, I participated in it. So I thought, let me try to, to, to smuggle, you know, some items, some items into the country in bulk and then see if it's possible. So there are two major talking points so far from that story. What I said happened with customs in terms of how they take bribes and let people smuggle things into the country. And then my mentioning of um, Ibrahim Yegungbo Dende, you know, as as a, as a smuggler. Those are the two talking points. But Dende was not even supposed to be part of the story. It was simply about customs, you know. And then in the process, I found out um, more than I, bar I, I bargained for, as they say. So can you tell us a bit more? Because I noticed that this um, has now gone on. You started sometime in 2022. This investigation... <laughs> seems to have taken a period of about two years. Uh, you, you did Fantastic. one by motorcycle, and then you said you tried to go back again to see, to, to do one, you know, with, with a vehicle, that's a, a car. But it would seem that one was more successful than the other. So I'm, 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 I'm happy you asked that question. Mm -hmm. um, so I went in November 2022, you know, went into Benin Republic, got the bags of rice, um, brought them into um, a, a, a place called Ojaodo. And then from Ojaodo, I was supposed to move them to Ilaro. But we had to bribe customs. So what happened was I went in, like I wanted to smuggle, and then I had to get smugglers already based in Ilaro and Ojaodo to take me in as part of them. Meaning that Everything I wrote that the smugglers told me, the smugglers were not speaking to a journalist. The smugglers believed that they were speaking to a smuggler like them. And that's what, so the, when, when people say, oh, it, it, it's hearsay, it's not hearsay. No, it's, it, it's just like going undercover to join a robbery gang. And then, you know, because you are one of them, they tell you, Oh, and, and the IGP or police commissioner is part of them. It's not, you can't treat that kind of information with scant regard. So we were waiting for customs to tell us the day to move the bags of rice from Ojaodon to Ilaro. And while waiting, I had to leave the country. I had a trip planned, so I traveled, you know. So there was a wait time because the customs official who took money from the lead smuggler had not yet given us the all clear. So what happens is, if you hear, if you read it in any newspaper, customs intercept or, um, one million bags of rice. Uh, those are people that did not bribe them. Those are people that did not bribe them. Anyone, and I say this with all conviction because I spent weeks in three spells to get this story. Anyone can bring in anything into Nigeria if you pay the right people. If you read any news that customs seized whatever, those are people that try to outsmart customs. If you bribe the right people in customs, you bring anything in. And when I say anything, I mean rice, I mean chicken, I mean turkey, I mean arms, I mean ammunition, I mean guns, I mean tramadol, I mean bus motorcycles used by terrorists in the north. These are all things that were brought in. The Nigerian customs cannot deny. They arrested IBD Dendi in the second half year for gun running. They know why they picked him. Let them come out and tell us. The previous time they arrested him, they confirmed they arrested him, but they never told us what he smuggled. So how come you can tell us you seized 100 bags of rice, but you arrest someone and you can't tell us what he smuggled? And the, custom, the then custom spokesman confirmed it. So yes, I did it in spells because each time we couldn't move it in on our own. 
nobody try if you try that you run the risk of getting killed as i wrote in that story one of the smugglers that i worked with directly his friend was killed because we were trying to move stuff into through the forest bypassing customs not paying bribes to customs you know his friend who thought he had the that charm he was fortified got shot by customs and he died Mm -hmm. You know, this particular smuggler, you know, jumped into the bush, he broke his leg, it took him time to heal. So, mm -hmm. you know, you know, pe people have to understand that when they consume the media and it's there that customs assist whatever, cocaine, codeine, whatever, those guys did not pay them. If you pay them, you bring it in. Besides, these are very, very heavy allegations. Because what it would mean, I, I'm making what, what it would them. mean, I, what, I can make them. Yeah, well, what you, what it I'm, means, I'm making them. Is that yeah. the entirety of? It would seem that they are no good eggs. That's what it would mean. Because initially, the impression I, I got, what when you uh, published the report and I read it, was that you, so it would seem that smugglers, some smugglers, are terrified of customs. I mean, you cannot just carry the goods across. Because in some instances, there were heloxes on patrol. In other words, there were still people who were doing their jobs, but that there were people within the system who were corrupt, who were willing to take money and tell these people where their colleagues were, and as such, betraying the entire efforts of the Nigerian custom system. That's the impression I got. Uh, not that we, the entire system itself is degenerate, but you seem to think otherwise. So both statements are correct. The entire system is degenerate in that the, 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 the good eggs are few, and then they cannot deliver when they're being betrayed all the time. If you pick a patrol, a customs patrol van, you know, Helox is a is street lingo among smugglers. Say so Helox is coming, Helox is coming, you know that's customs. If you pick the customs patrol van, and you go to the store, and smugglers already know you are coming. What can you do? You know, there is nothing you can do. As I said, the only guys who get caught are the ones that have not bribed anyone such that the patrol team can be sabotaged. Well, I do also know that in the period of this investigation, I mean, which you also have admitted, took a while for, you know, many reasons. Um, the hierarchy of the of custom service has also seen a, a shakeup of of some sort. Uh, we've seen a new CG appointed to the helm. Has there been any change in modus operandi? Nothing has changed. The new CG knows everything that is happening. You know, the biggest smuggler in the southwest is friends with the new CG. There's a relationship. Um, is friends with the president. He was on the president's train to the climate summit in Dubai. He's friends with a number of governors. He's politically connected. So everyone who has the constitutional power to stop smuggling in Nigeria is aware of the depth of the problem, of the people behind it, and benefits directly or indirectly. I am making these statements. I know they are grave statements, and I'm saying them with certainty, simply because I went in, I embedded with them, I spent time with them, and I know that it is impossible for that scale of movement of goods, of items. I saw trailers for that I, import, I imported or I small goods, 100 bags of rice. I saw trailers moving stuff unchecked and they are labeled headquarters movements nobody could stop them you can't you can't put a customs officer on the road and then the custom officer is not free to stop movements of trailers coming from outside the country it can only happen because as they say in, in nigerian um, parlance it's order from above. Well, I, I have been, as I also pointed out, there were two reports released almost back to back within the month of February alone. And it does appear now from this um, ongoing 
investigation which you, you say you, you said you came across uh, with one of the, I'm trying to remember his name now, um, IBD, I think you called him in your investigation. Yeah, IBD it, didn't do. Yeah, it does appear that quite a lot more is going to be coming out. But I, I want to focus on the first two reports which you released. Now, the first one, I, I saw that um, you undertook it, you, you went to, I mean, you went to Ilaro and all these other places around Ogun State. Benary you, you, exactly, you embedded and, you know, you had visuals and all of that. But the, the subsequent one, uh, in which you accuse the Nigeria Customs Service of smuggling motorcycles used by terrorists. And, and these are grievous allegations when the Customs Service itself is the one, <laughs> you say, smuggling these motorcycles on behalf of terrorists, not just for commercial motorcyclists, because we know that it's still a major source of transportation for many people across the country, but specifically for terrorists. And you also say they import hard drugs um, into the country, you seem to have relied more on sources uh, than, an, than an actual investigation. What would you say is responsible for the differences in connecting the investigative dots? So for every single undercover investigation I've done, I have happened on sources who were willing to volunteer more information, um, sometimes with proof, when not with proof, with a promise to show up, if necessary, in court, if anyone says there's a lawsuit. So the source I quoted in that story is not an ordinary source. <laughs> Look, no source can tell you that zone A, all movement of goods in zone A have been narrowed down only to order or down. No ordinary source can give you that terminology. No ordinary source can know the contents of goods being moved into the country. No ordinary source can know the destination of motorcycles. You said, and correctly, yeah, uh, motorcycles are means of transport. Not, when you bring in motorcycles into this country and they are destined for the north, we are creating problems. When you bring in Tramadol and it is destined for the north, you are creating problems. When you smuggle in arms and ammunition in the second quarter of 2022, and we had a presidential election in the first quarter of 2023, you are creating problems. Now, if the Nigerian customs arrests you for gun running and you are freed, it means that there are people who are powerful who benefit from it. The inspector general of police is from this region, it's from Yewa. This smuggler is from Yewa. The IGP, if he does not know what is happening, where he's from, then he's not fit to be IGP if he doesn't know. But he knows. You, you probably will, during this show, play a video of Dende threatening to kill a custom officer who, for whatever reason, stopped his um, vehicle containing rice, stopped it from entering the country. And he was openly boasting. I have called Wale. That's the CGC. I have called Ejibunu. That's the controller of operations in Zone A. That's the most powerful controller in the Southwest. I've called Ejibunu. I've told Ejibunu to call Wale. And... You know, the confidence, the language. You had customs officials, gun-wielding customs officials. Not like they were not armed. They were armed, begging him, pleading him. You know, these are things you see that show you how bad the situation is, how terrible. We are sitting on a keg of gunpowder in this country. Our insecurity issues are nowhere close to getting resolved. Because if you move in arms and ammunition, last get into the country and you get away with it, they've disappeared into the country. They are ending up in the arms of people who have no respect for the sanctity of life and some damage will be done with it. Mm. it also... So it's a big problem mm -hmm. as sent one person to Ilaru to go and ask, 
please, who are the smugglers in this town? If you ask 20 people in Ilaru, 19 will tell you the same name. If you go to other, so as, as media, why are you giving a voice to someone claiming to be whom he is not? That's, you know, on the part of the media. Then as people, it's not enough to read online and that's the end. Ask questions. If you want to protest to the Office of Customs, protest. Billions, dozens, you know, billions of naira can't be traced to people and nobody is forcing the agency to respond. The CDC did not get to his office the following day and meet a crowd of 1,000 Nigerians saying, you must explain to us what is going on. So if Nigerians are not going to you know, take action beyond speaking on social media, then people like Customs will sit somewhere and say, you don't have to respond to them. Give them three days, five days, one week. It will blow over. They'll be distracted by another headline. And then life continues. It's too easy the way um, those who are filtering away our commonwealth, it's just too easy how they get away with it.